Learn this. Bloom's Taxonomy, Learning in Action. In this video you will learn about the basic principle of Bloom's Taxonomy. This talking video was created at SlideTalk.net, the shortest path to publish presentations online as talking videos. Bloom's Taxonomy is concerned with classification of learning objectives within education. It can be used to stimulate a more comprehensive approach to education, considering the learner from all aspects, and showing the relationships between learning processes in different domains, while at the same time breaking down the learning process in meaningful and useful steps. Benjamin Bloom is the name of an educational psychologist who back in the 50s chaired a comedy of educators devoted to study the learning process and the educational system. He died in 1999 at the age of 86. Bloom and his colleagues were facing the problem of creating standardized tests and allow for exchange of tests and ideas between schools. To agree on how to evaluate the learner's performance on a specific subject, you need to have agreed first on the learning objectives for that subject. The learning objectives needed to be defined against an agreed model for the learning process. This was the enterprise undertaken by Bloom and his colleagues. As a result, in 1956 Bloom and his collaborators published a text called Taxonomy of Educational Objectives, the classification of educational goals that became soon a milestone in the educational field. We will now look at the main findings and how to apply them. The word taxonomy comes from the Greek words taxis that can be translated as arrangement and nomos that can be translated as science. Taxonomy means thus, the science of arrangements. It is nothing but a fancy word for classification. The taxonomy refers to a classification of the learning objectives, or skills, that the learner should acquire. Skills are divided into three domains. The first domain is the cognitive domain. Here we find the skills typically associated with knowing and the head. Then we have the affective domain, covering skills associated with feeling or the heart. The third domain is the psychomotor domain, covering skills associated with doing or the hands. It is important to keep in mind that in reality these three domains are not separated. The level of skills in one domain may depend on the level of skills in the other domains. However it is useful to consider and study them separately. Within each domain, skills are the results of processes, graphically represented as ranging from lower order processes to higher order processes. Lower order processes cover more basic function with a lower level of complexity. Higher order processes correspond to more evolved and more complex functions. We start by exploring the cognitive domain. Skills in the cognitive domain revolve around knowledge comprehension, and critical thinking on a particular topic. Traditional education tends to emphasize the skills in the cognitive domain. Knowledge. The skill of exhibiting memory of previously learned materials by recalling facts, terms, basic concepts and answers. Knowledge at this level consists mainly of memory and the ability to retrieve the proper information when needed. Comprehension. Demonstrate understanding of facts and ideas by organizing, comparing, interpreting, describing, and stating the main ideas. At this level knowledge can be compared and extracted. Application. Solve problems in new situations by applying acquired knowledge, facts, techniques and rules in a different way. At this level knowledge can be applied to new situations. Analysis. Examine and break down knowledge into parts by identifying motives or causes. Make inferences and find evidence to support generalizations. At this level knowledge can be used to draw new conclusions. Synthesis. Compile information together in a different way by proposing alternative solutions. At this level knowledge can be used for planning actions, or to derive new knowledge. Evaluation. It is the highest order skill in the cognitive domain. The evaluation skill allows presenting and defending opinions by making judgments about information, validity of ideas, 
or quality of work. At this level knowledge can be reflected upon, allowing for critical thinking. For educators, this model provides a sort of checklist to verify that learners are not just passively acquiring knowledge, but that they also learn how to apply knowledge, how to integrate it in their thinking, and how to reflect upon it by using critical thinking. The Effective Domain Skills in the Effective Domain describe the way people react emotionally to learning stimulus and to the persons involved in the learning situation. It also covers the ability to feel the pain and joy of other living things. The objectives in this domain typically target the awareness and maturity in attitudes, emotion, and feelings. Receiving. This is the lowest and most basic skill, where the learner can pay attention to a learning stimulus, even if in a passive way. Without this level no learning can occur. Responding. The learner participates actively by reacting in some way to the learning stimulus. Valuing. The learner attaches a value to the learning stimulus and acquires knowledge. This ranges from simple acceptance or refusal to the more complex state of commitment. At this level the learner shows the skill to be able to take a stand in a particular issue. Organizing. The learner organizes values into priorities by contrasting different values, resolving conflicts between them, and creating a unique value system. The emphasis is on comparing, relating, and synthesizing values. At this level the learner can form a larger opinion on a topic by integrating, comparing and prioritizing different stands on individual matters. Characterizing the learner holds a particular value or belief that now exerts influence on the general behavior so that it becomes a characteristic of that person. Instructional objectives are concerned with the learner's general patterns of adjustment on the personal, social, and emotional planes. On the effective plan, the learner's skills should evolve from merely recognize a learning stimulus, to start acting on it, form an independent opinion, and finally evolve into a unique and personal character, holding a complex set of values and opinions. The Psychomotor Domain Skills in the Psychomotor Domain describe the ability to physically manipulate a tool or instrument like a pencil or a hammer. There are different versions of the classification in this domain, but the general principle are the same. Perception the ability to use sensory cues to guide motor activity. For example the ability to estimate the position where a ball will land, after it is thrown, and then moving to the correct location to catch the ball. Set. Readiness to act. Mental, physical, and emotional dispositions that make one respond in a certain way to a situation. Examples. The learner knows and acts upon a sequence of steps in a manufacturing process. Guided response. An early stage in learning a complex skill that includes imitation and trial and error. Adequacy of performance is achieved by practicing. Examples. The learner follows instructions to build a model. Or the learner responds to hand signals of instructor while learning to operate a machine. Mechanism. This is the intermediate stage in learning a complex skill. Learned responses have become habitual and the movements can be performed with some confidence and proficiency. Examples. The learner has acquired the skill to use a software or drive a car. Complex overage response. The skillful performance of motor acts that involve complex movement patterns. Proficiency is indicated by a quick, accurate, and highly coordinated performance, requiring a minimum of energy. Example. A tennis player hits the ball and can tell by the feel of the act what the result will produce. Adaptation. Skills are well developed and the individual can modify movement patterns to fit special requirements. Example. The learner responds effectively to unexpected experiences. Origination. The skill of creating completely new movement patterns to fit a particular situation or specific problem. At this level, a creative layer is built upon highly developed skills. The psychomotor skills develop from basic coordination and interpretation of sensory cues, 
to learning more complex sequence of operations that are refined until eventually reach a level where they can be modified, and even created, when the need arises. We have now reached the end of this introduction to Bloom's taxonomy and its three domains, cognitive, affective and psychomotor. Visit slidetalk.net for more talking videos, or for creating your own talking videos.